Oh, uh, okay. How's it going, everyone? AC Undertaker here. Welcome back to, I'm going to say, a new stream. Although this is the second attempt because the last one had some buffering issues. So I am so sorry to those of you who are watching this on playback. Um, hopefully, this is going to be working a little bit smoother. The playback, we had some issues. So this is the second stream. There's going to be a little bit more build up here. I'm going to do my best to build up what I'm talking about in the today's stream and what we're going to be doing for today's stream. Apologies to those of you in the live chat at the moment, but if you are watching this on playback, do consider subscribing so you do not miss any of my live streams going forward as I will be streaming pretty often in the future, every couple of weeks or so. And um, right, this is, um, this is fairly nerve wracking. I'm really hoping that everything is working perfectly now. I hope that we're getting a healthy stream. Please do let me know. I'm not sure what was causing that issue. So we'll see what everyone says. Uh, we'll just have to wait for everyone to let me know. If it does go wrong, then there is obviously something up. In 10 minutes, the stream was up. Nope, the stream is live right now. It's still lagging. No. It, surely it's not lagging. Guys, please do let me know if the stream is running smoothly or not. I'm having a look right now and seeing if my stream does work. Um, for me... By the way, if you are watching this on playback, uh, please do skip ahead a little bit. I'll put a timestamp down below in the comment section for you to um, jump forward to when the tutorial starts. Apologies, though. This is a slight technical issue. And it looks like it is running good. It's not lagging. Okay, so I did downscale. This is now in 30 FPS, which is not what I want to stream at. I don't know if that was what was causing the issue. I did reload the page as well. There was a lot of things I did. Hopefully it is working smoothly. Everyone said to me it is working smoothly. So that is awesome. Just gonna make sure that the music isn't too loud. Give me one second. Cause I did reload this page. Okay, so the music is struggling to load as well. So there is a, sh okay. It is apparent what's happening right now. Um, the issue isn't. Let me just see if the next song plays. Yeah, so there is an issue with my web browser itself, which is causing this issue. I'm not sure what's going on right now. I'm not sure if there's something I need to do uh, to fix this, but something is causing the web browser to have a problem, which is why the music is at the moment in and out. And I'm just gonna try and just do one setting before we get started with today's stream. Again, I apologize to those of you who are watching this on playback. You aren't aware of the issues that we're suffering right now. There are some technical issues, but just give me one second to reload this and everything should be good. Um, but while that reloads, just want to say to you guys, uh, we are doing a tutorial lesson here today. I'm going to showcase uh, how to color, how to use markers, give you some tips, tricks. It's not going to be the best tutorial in the world because I'm not a teacher, but I'm going to do my best to just show you how I do things, how I tackle things, and any problems that do arise, I'll show you how I handle them. And uh, I'm sure many people in the comments will ask me questions and we'll... Uh We'll work together on fixing those things. But yeah, I'm. it seems to be my computer itself is having an issue. Um, not too sure what's going on here. But it's looking good, right? It's looking good, guys. Yes, I did update. Uh, my computer is up to date, which uh, is probably what's causing it, to be honest. Um, updating Windows always causes problems, doesn't it? So, um, yeah, the music isn't playing right now. I'm having an issue with the music. I'm having an issue with the entire system right now. So, uh, I might be better off loading up the other browser that actually does work, which um, is working perfectly fine. Yeah, it's the browser. Okay, it's the browser. Um, so let me just load up the um, other um, place so we can listen to music. So yeah, it's the browser. The browser is the issue right now. That's what was causing it. So um, we're just changing browsers over, which um, will just take me one moment to find the music. Uh, da, 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 da. This music, by the way, is um, a paid license, which I paid for. And yeah, this is running smooth. This is um, loading everything up. So it's the browser. It's the browser. And if I press next, we should hear the next song. Okay. Yep, it's the browser, guys. It happens. Uh, it happens. Some browsers are terrible. Some browsers are good. But anyway, so now that we know that the stream is working perfectly, guys, welcome to a brand new stream. My name is ADC Art Attack. This is the new studio, uh, Studio 2.0. Look at me just like, you know, sneaking this intro in here. Don't worry, because everyone who's watching this right now, you didn't see all of that stuff before because you skipped ahead, didn't you? You clicked on that comment down below, so you, you skipped forward. Those of you watching this live, you've seen the shambles. You've seen the problems that have happened right now. <laughs> But this is Studio 2.0. This is a studio which is going to be live stream dedicated. I actually do stream full time over on twitch.tv forward slash ADC Art Attack. So if you do want to follow me there, comment down below. Or oh, there's a 
link in the description down below. Follow me over there. I stream five days a week, four or five days a week, depending. And I do other type of content, gaming as well on a gaming channel. There's just so much stuff coming. But anyway, switching over to the art stuff. This book is something... I'm going to repeat a lot of this stuff. So you guys who were watching this already... You've, you, you've, don't spoil it for the other people, all right? Shh, I'm just going to redo it. So <laughs> this book right here is a book that I think everyone should get. This type of book. If you are a new artist and an experienced artist, this is going to make your life a lot easier and it's going to help you to learn some of the foundations of doing artwork. Much like those books or pages we did as a child where we would have a drawing on half of the page and the other half of the page was gridded with squares and you would finish the artwork yourself. This one is similar in that nature. Um, yes, time, if you could um, actually pin the comment to the throne, that would be amazing because I haven't actually done that right now. So if you could do that, that would be fantastic. Time, thank you so much. Um, so this book right here, as you can see, we're not lagging, are we guys? Everything looks good. I think everything looks good. Hi, Eck. Thank you so much, Eck. So, as you can see right here, um, this book actually has a split piece of artwork. So on one side we have the reference, and on the other side we have the line work for you to color. This book is strictly for your coloring, but provides you a means to not think about what it is you're doing. And that's one of the big things when you are an artist, when you are starting out, is thinking too much about what it is you're doing. Overthinking, trying to figure out how those lights and darks work. When it is just basic knowledge and doing it repetitively over time, it will get built into you. It's how I learned it and it's how you can learn it. You don't have to have an education around basic shapes and basic shadows because you have that as a human being built into you. It's how you can recognize depth, for example, and how you know how objects look from a distance. You can see the depth perception. You can see the shadows in those things and recognize them and you know when they're off. So doing things like this, doing them repetitively, it removes the thought process and allows you to do this. Now today I'm gonna to be, I don't really know, I'm gonna do a fair few different examples, different pieces of artwork. I might not finish all of them, but I might also, because I do have a piece of artwork from my live streaming drawing folder. Guys, don't tell me we're lagging. Please don't tell me we're lagging. We're not lagging. Please don't tell me we're lagging. Mods, are we lagging or not? So this is my live streaming um, folder where I do a lot of drawings in my live videos as well as tutorials, which was one right here, actually. I hope we're not lagging. They are lying, right? I thought so. I thought so. You, you try, you're trying to get me while I'm streaming. I I see it. I, you try to throw me off my game. It's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> So, I do do some tutorials, and this one, for example, was a tutorial based on using markers without buying an excess of markers. So each one of these areas is one color, one green, one red, one blue, and so on. Baby? Eck, thank you so much for the... <laughs> thank you so much for that, I appreciate you. Um, so as you can see right here, this is a way of saving money, but also an actual serious way of doing artwork as well. I've done it a few times, where I only used... Not this example where I only used one color for each area by using the pencil underneath to enhance the shadows. I'm so distracted by the lagging. You guys, you're trolling me. You're trolling me. I don't like it. I don't, I don't like what you're doing. You're trolling me. But there are instances where you may want to use uh, multiple markers. For example, something like this. So if you wanted to get a bright, vibrant image, you would want to use multiple markers. And in this instance, I would use a marker like Ohuhu, something with really strong opacity you want something that covers very, very well, but doesn't have such a great layering ability, which Ohuhu are. They have a great single layer, but their second layers and third layers and fourth layers aren't as strong. Whereas with a Copic marker, they're quite translucent. So when you do use them, you can layer quite heavily on them, but also show the work underneath, which is what we're gonna be doing today. Here we go. I know, right? You guys are trolling me. And I fell for it. It's just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. I I've been trolled by my community. I mean, I why would you guys do that to me? Why would you, right, come to my stream and just decide to troll? I mean, it's just... I'm very proud of you, actually. I'm very... You guys who troll me, I'm proud of you. I am very proud of you. So, okay. This is probably actually a very good place to start. It likes color, but this would be an actually awesome place to start in showing values. Do I have greys? I think I have greys. I have greys. I think this is going to be a very, very, very good example here. So, we're going to zoom in a little bit here. 
Some people are saying it's buffering. Some people are saying it's not buffering. Um, just for the sake of arguments, I will check this. And I'll just make sure uh, that we are not buffering. But I would say make sure that you are on a uh, strong internet connection. And let me just let me just um, sit for an advert here. I'll keep that playing in the background so I can confirm. I won't start the tutorial just yet until we can ensure that everything looks good for everyone. So just give it a moment. Once I get through this very, very, very long ad, we'll be able to see if it does uh, buff or if it is working properly. But I do know that you guys are trolling me now, so I'm going to look out for you guys. I see you. I'm just ensure. I don't want to start a tutorial. For those of you who are watching this on playback, I don't want to start a tutorial and then it's not viewable for many of you. YouTube premium for the win. <laughs> Absolutely. No ads, right? Although it's going to be a bit of an unfair me watching this because obviously I'm using uh, the same connection here to watch. Um, but many people are saying there's no lag at all, so... Can't watch it, it freezes every five seconds. Don't trust them. Yeah, so many people are saying like it's not lagging and then other people are saying it is lagging, so... Alright, I've got it playing for me. It's buffering for me. I It is buffering for me. It's buffering. For, this is so strange. So for me, it's buffering. And for some of you, it's buffering. But for other people, we're not buffering at all. Why am I buffering? Just keep going. Yeah, I think we'll just keep going, guys. Uh, I think it's unfortunate. I think many people are just suffering internet problems. Maybe it's the providers that we're with. Um, I think there are other issues afoot there. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Many people are saying it's fine. Um, I'm not on 5G. I'm on, um, I'm on Ethernet cables. I'm not on any sort of... But, yeah, it, it must be... Um, I'm just checking to make sure I am on Ethernet. I'm on Ethernet. That's fine. Okay, yeah, I think it's fine, guys. Okay, so we're going to start then. So I'm going to start with this one. I think that's starting with... Um, are we too dark? Why am I so dark? No, we don't want that. We want... No, we don't want that either. We want to make ourselves a little bit brighter. No, that's fine. Maybe that's okay. But yes, so I'm going to start with this one because it is a grayscale. And grayscale is amazing for learning values and for learning those depths and those highlights, uh, which is basically what we say when we say values or gradients. Uh, we're working on the lights and the darks. So, yeah, using something that is in grayscale is a really good thing. I do understand, yeah, um, some people are suffering some buffering and stuff like that. So, it's just happening for some people. I'm so sorry. I think it's YouTube that's having an issue. Um, I was having problems with YouTube itself as well yesterday. So, I'm so sorry for that. But, right, let's get on with this. Um, I'm going to be using, I guess, a match of these because we are using a reference here to go through this. I'm going to show you how we build this up and how we do it. Uh, hopefully that looks nice and clear. We should have all my focus on. Uh, so when I look at this, I see nothing but cool grays. So this is a warm gray here. There's actually no color on this at all. So that's a warm gray. And the rest of this is cool grays. So that's going to make it very, very easy to do. Um, so yeah, we'll start in sort of like this midsection here. And we'll go around the arm to show you how we do it. Now, I'm not going to follow it perfectly. I'm going to do my own um, effect and style to it. But I'll use it as a basic guideline on how we do that. So let me just bring this over here. And um, yeah, so cool grays it is. Hey, Crazy Blue, thank you so much and welcome to the Ducklings. Thank you so much. Absolutely amazing. Guys, I do apologize though. If anyone's suffering from the buffering, it happens. I've got all my markers out. Now, when I work in grayscale alone, it's very hard for me to give a, you're awesome. It's very hard for me to give a very detailed um, tutorial and instructional guide. Um, don't be sorry for someone else's mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what I would say is you, could, you you do want to work from lights to darks, right? Now, I know there's a lot of advice out there for people who say work from dark to lights. Is it a preference thing? I, I personally don't think so. I think when you are working with markers, you need to go from your lights to darks. I would disagree with anyone that says going darks to lights. I know there is a preference-based thing, and that comes usually from people who work with paints. Now, when I am working with something like gouache, I'm probably going to go darks to lights. That's probably a much better thing because I'm layering on top of those paints. But when I'm working with markers, 
light to dark is the way forward. I would also say that when you are working from lights to darks, um, try to keep the sample size of markers that you're using to a very low number. Now that's gonna be dependent on the brand of markers that you're using. A marker brand that blends very well, something like Graphic B, um, Copix, and Windsor and Newton, you're gonna need few markers. You're not gonna need as many as you would need with like an Ohuhu marker. Ohuhu, you're gonna need like seven or eight, almost two times the amount of markers to achieve the same level of smooth blending. Now that's not to say they're better or worse, it just means that to get that smooth blending, which again, is not a factor of a marker being better or worse. I see this a lot. People think that because a marker can blend better than another marker, that means it's better. No, uh, blending is a style and the type of style that you're going for is going to depend on what your goals are. So blending isn't a factor when deciding which marker is better. Same thing as the opacities, it doesn't matter. There's gonna be various things that come together to figure out which marker is gonna be best. So. <laughs> Let's go. Right, I'm going to start with a base layer. And again, I'm using a sort of reference here, but I'm going to use it as a guide rather than copying it. We're going to do my own style with this one. So what I do is I try to get as much of the color down as possible. I want to remove as much of the white paper as I can, but I don't want to layer too heavily. Because if I layer too heavily, I'm going to change the color of this marker. I'm going to get patchy um, tones. And I want to leave myself enough room for being able to layer on top of this base layer later on without ruining the base layer. And it'll make sense once I start adding this. Of course, the paper doesn't matter. Uh, I'll go on to that shortly. J of all trades. <laughs> Hi, ADC. Oh, who, who has improved my art? Thank you. Also gave you some baking tips in the last video. I did I, I probably did see, There was a lot of people giving me advice. So I probably did. I hope I did uh, respond to it and see it. Uh, but you guys were amazing in my last video. It was a fantastic video. It was lovely doing some cooking stuff. Um, thank you so much, Jay. You're absolutely amazing. Thank you so, so, so much. I do hope it's still clear for everyone. Everyone can still see the stream. There's no buffering happening. Ek, are you getting any buffering or is it okay? Um, so this is where things get a little bit serious. So once you've got the first layer down, it's a very easy layer to do. There's no real... You're just coloring, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's smooth. It doesn't matter if it's patchy. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You just need a base layer down. Now that I have it, we move on to the second layer. And this is where you start to get very careful with those blends and how much you layer over things. So I'm going to do, again, similar to what they've done here. I'm going to start working on this area here of the bicep. Now, before you go into doing a blending, uh, you should really know what kind of style you're going for. I'm going for a realism or blending style. So when I'm doing it, break down every single... <laughs> Everyone says it's great. So awesome. So <laughs> I think it is just the EU having a problem right now. So when you do start coloring, and I've said this many times in the past, break down every one of the assets or areas into their simplest forms. So when I'm working on the bicep, this is a ball. So when I'm working on a ball, how do I blend a ball? And again, I know it looks like, why, why is he not coloring? This is important before I start coloring. It's very important. So when I start coloring in a ball, Actually, I'll draw it with a marker so it's easier to see. So here's the bicep. So the bicep is right there. So here's our biceps. So when I start coloring in a bicep, what I want is to think about where the light's coming from. So in this example, the light is sort of... Jay, thank you so much. The light is sort of straight on. So if the light's coming from here, we're going to have a highlighted spot right here. So this is where the highlight is. Now, the shadow will go all around the highlight and it's going to peak towards that mark now when you do your next gradient your next depth you come in a little bit more that is very dark what a jump all right but yes so you want to come in towards that point again and all you're doing is layering it and this is what i think of it becomes instinct later on in your art career but this is how i think and how i approach every single area of the coloring. And I know it sounds long-winded. I know it sounds like it takes a very long time. It doesn't. This is an immediate thing. So I'm gonna translate that to that right now. And uh, you're probably wondering how the other areas impact that. I'll show you as we do it. So I'm gonna get the second color. Come on, where are you? There we go. I picked up the wrong marker before. So we get the next gradient along. So I'm gonna translate this to this. Uh, you can get fancy and add like an under tone if you want, like right here. It's it's up to you if you want to do that. Um, for the sakes of this, 
I'll tell you what, I'll do it as well. Why not? So all I'm doing is I'm gradually pushing out the ink towards where that highlighted spot is. Now, I can't go any further at this point because this is being obstructed. So this area is obstructing this part. This section is obstructed right here. But if you're going to put another layer area on top of it, that now inter interacts and impacts the base layer, right? So there's an object on top of this. So how's that gonna impact it? You put a pen over it, you can see the shadow that goes across that area. So all I gotta do is follow the line. And again, that negates, by the way, this highlight point. It goes over it, it is on top of it. So it has to negate all of those factors below. So again, I'm just going over the top of this and there is our new shadow for that object. So again, I go back to the next gradient up, or I could just actually blend that in. It's blended very well, but we'll blend it in with the lower tone, with the base tone. I do not, by the way, blend this layer into that. They're not interacting with each other. This one is on top of it. So I do not blend this one into that base layer. The base layer is its own entity. The layer on top is its own one. I don't need to blend it into it. Um, unless, we'll go into that in a later date. That's There's a whole technical side to that. I won't go into that, but there is a, there is a time when you would want to blend that in. But um, so right now, I'm going to again, apply all of this area into this, ignoring the interaction from that top object. So again, I'm up to this area right here. I'm following all of this structure. I'm doing it all the way around. I can't go any further because there's an arm in a way. So let me just blend all of that in using the second tone. And now I'm gonna go back to this object and this one does the same thing. It has its own blend layer. So now it's already blended itself, so I don't need to worry. But what I would have done there is used the shadow layer on this one and blended its deep tone back into itself. And that's all you have to do. Can I zoom in? Of course I can zoom in. Here you go. So, as you can see, all I'm doing here is applying the ball, shadows, whatever, to this area. So now we move on to the next areas. And I'm gonna move into, let me get my marker so I can draw it for you. We're gonna move into this section right here. I could move into the back one, it doesn't matter, but I'll move into this one because it's on top, it's just gonna be easier to do. This is, again, another ball. It's another shape, it's another object. So if I put that in its area here, there is that object. So again, the light, the highlight is here. Let's get the light marker so we can show it. The highlight is gonna be right there. There's the highlight, same thing, same highlight. And all I'm gonna do is shade this entire area in. Now you notice a big difference in the way that I'm coloring when I'm doing this. You can see right there how hard those edges are, right? That's because I'm not letting the pen off the paper. I'm doing this, I'm scribbling, right? Or if I do this and I come back at myself, I get these hard lines like this. But if I go like this, I get these extremely smooth gradient shifts into light colors, light smooth colors. And what I'm doing, if I can show you like this, from this view, is I am pushing upwards. And because there is a natural angle, when you have your hand on the paper, there is a natural flow. I cannot keep this, the pen. You can see the natural curve of the pen. It goes upwards, it goes away from the paper. It's a natural movement. It doesn't stay anywhere near that paper at the end of the flick. So doing that in a fast motion, adds an extreme flick to it. Now, when I come in on myself, what I'm getting now is when I'm when I'm pulling that pen inwards, let's focus. Hello, focus. Yeah, so when I come in on myself, I'm going down towards the paper. If I'm going down towards the paper, I'm applying pressure. I'm applying the ink to the paper harder. So I'm gonna get these hard splots at the end of each of these strokes. You can see how it starts off hard, it goes smooth, it ends hard. These ones start off hard, they end smooth. That was not a good example. They end smooth. It's a natural flow of your hand. So always push the marker away from you. And when, I, and when you see me doing this, I'm just doing it quickly. That's all I'm doing. I can go as fast as I want and always achieve the same result. I'm always flicking away from the paper, away from myself, and that is creating a natural smooth blend. That's how you blend. You need that smooth announcement on live. Yeah, I'm so sorry. This is actually the second live stream because the first one failed. We had a problem, so I'm so sorry about that. 
So again, we pry this back to this area here. I've lost my cat butt. Oh, there it is. Right. So when I come back to the ball shape down here, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did there. It's the same shape, so it just applies the same logic. And as you can see, I'm flicking and it almost blends by itself. I don't actually need to use the base layer to blend into that. It's done the job for it because of the flick technique. If I wasn't using a flick technique, then we would end up with that. A very hard shape shadow. So what you do when you get those hard shadows is you wanna kinda of act quickly. Sort of like give yourself like a minute at most. My gosh. You want to just go back in and start blending that in and push it as much as you think you need to to try and achieve that blend but it is a bit of a mistake that you don't really want to land into i'm so sorry about the um about the uh freezing that might be happening for some people there seems to be an issue with youtube right now so i apologize for that but some people aren't getting the freeze if you are getting it i apologize uh, if you are getting it awesome <laughs> Hopefully the video itself when it goes live isn't inside the booth. By the way, I need to respond to you actually. I think you emailed me. I need to check in on that. I'm so sorry. Uh, send me a message on Twitter or something. Might be a little bit easier. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put that just for the clarity so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to put the shadow layer on there. Again, I'm obeying the same rule that I was doing here. So you can see these two shapes. And these two shapes are that one and that one. This is the ball right here. This is a sort of tricep... Uh, tricep um forearm muscle that comes across here so it will be this curve muscle there that comes right up and across so in his pose for example his arms crossed i don't have the muscles because i'm not i'm not a man yeah that comes right across there and it goes up over here and onto the bicep so that's what that is so what i'm gonna do is apply that onto here and it's very easy to do so i get that color there's not much visible as you can see so i've only got to focus on this bit right here there's really not much that i have to do except for figure out why that's not working i don't know why this one's so dark suddenly but yeah so again all we're doing is we're applying that here that's it now obviously there's i'm missing the bright highlights that was just there to show you where the light is coming from so ignore those bright highlights they're not relevant um and i might be able to slip in a little bit of shadow as well so go into this area and we just get that little bit of shadow that we can see right here that is visible and there you go so we've got the two shadow areas um if you did want to apply color to this by the way i'll do it to show you how we apply color um but i wouldn't for this character i wouldn't apply color in fact i think a good area to do that would maybe be in the face so we'll do the face now so you can see what i'm talking about um this is going to be too much effort for me to show you what the shadow is going to be like and all of this sort of stuff um yeah, for some people it's like super laggy. I'm so, so, so sorry. Um, but some of you are getting the lag, correct? Some of you are having a really small, uh, smooth experience. I believe. I don't know. If you go too dark, you'll be loving him. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can go, realistically, you can go as dark as you want um, in any of the artwork that you do um, and still tell a story of the character. It doesn't matter uh, what kind of color the character is or what color it is you're going for, um, whether they're light, dark, whatever. Uh, I can still go to any level I want. I can go as dark as I want, as light as I want, and still achieve the same result as long as the surrounding areas, so if I'm doing the background, the context of the image and the context of the artwork is what's important at the end of the day, your gradients and values don't really matter too much. Um, as you've seen when I do my one color challenges, uh, for example, the spider Gwen, um, she was completely green and doing her completely green that, yeah, I mean, she's not green, but doing it completely green, it still told the story and the setting and the scene made it made sense and it looked fantastic. So yeah, we're going to move into this again, too much going on here, but in my mind, I'm applying the exact same things that I apply here to this area. So the head is... I'm going to break it down very, very simplistically here and very quickly, but it's going to be near impossible to explain in any sort of sensible way, um, given that this is going to be... There's just way too much, and you have to build this up as, over time with a habit. But if we just very loosely here, consider this entire object is a ball. So his head is just one big ball. What you do from this point is you start looking at like where the shadow is going to be, where everything's going to be on the ball shape itself. Um, so if we... I don't know. We just pick the light coming from here. So all of this area will be shaded over here and then it gets darker as you go down there but now you start applying different areas so there'll be like say there's a nose right here 
the nose is its own entity. It's another object. So it's a triangle, it's a rectangle. There's so many things that go into it. So you apply the shadows that you would naturally do to the ball shape onto the nose and so on and so forth. With the cheeks here, you've got a cheekbone. So that would have its own shadow that goes under there. Cheekbone over here, shadows over there. And that's how you do it. But it is just a long-winded building process that you do and you have to go through. Sorry guys, I'm just reading the chat. We are live right now if you are watching this playback. There are some playback issues that people are complaining about right now, so I don't know what's going on there. Um, I think there's just are some problems that people are having. I think the lag is, um, I think the lag is YouTube itself. Um, so hopefully the video itself won't be laggy when it does go live on the channel um, as a video of its own, but I apologize for all of that. So I'm gonna start doing this face. And the reason I'm doing the face right now and jumping ahead of this part is because with the face, I'm gonna be able to show you how to add the color to the grayscale image, which is very important and a great way of working backwards with your artwork if you wanna do your shadows first and your color later, which is a valid art style and you can do it. So let's quickly do this. So what I will do here is I'll apply the grayscale very quickly to wherever I want um, the shadows to start. Uh, leaving the white area is going to leave. So anything that's left with the paper is going to have the color in its purest form. So when I put the layer of color on top, the color itself at its lightest will show. Okay, so you got to keep that in mind when you do this. So anywhere there's no grayscale, the color will be there. So again, just doing that. And the color's gonna be all over this, by the way, but that's just gonna give you the natural highlight. If it's buffering, just restart it, somebody said. Thank you for the good advice, appreciate it. So we're just gonna add some more shadows here, following the same rule of the ball that goes around. Just gonna put that shadow right there. A little bit there. I'm not going to go too detailed with this. Obviously, it's a very small area. And if I focus too much on this, we'll never get done. So, something like that. Uh, a little bit more darkness. I would avoid doing what I'm doing. I'm doing it quickly for the sakes of tutorial. But you should give yourself about a minute, a minute and a half between adding that next layer. Um, when you go to the third layer. So, your first and second layer, or your second and third layer, or your third and fourth layer, they can be added in a very quick time frame with each other. But your first, second, third should not be added together. It should be one, two, time, two, three, time, three, four, time. You should be working like that. If you layer too heavily, everything's gonna blend. Everything's gonna wash and you're gonna damage the paper very quickly. So work, like I say, one, two, and maybe go back to one, because that's how I work. I work one, two, one, two, three, one, or two, three, two, one, and then so on like that. So you just work backwards to forwards. Ihan, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate you. So just adding some more of that shadow in here. Putting it there. A little bit under the nose where the light's coming from. Again, the light source isn't obeying too many rules right here. This is a tutorial, so don't worry too much about me focusing on the accuracy of this. Because I don't know if I'm going to be accurate here. In terms of like the consistency of the direction of light. Um, that's actually a good spot for me to just like leave that and start adding the color to it. Uh, but I will add a shadow layer. So we'll just put the shadow of this object being cast here. And uh, also give a shadow here because I think the light source can come from multiple areas here. So we'll just do that like that and maybe a little bit there. Okay, so here's the point where I can start adding the color to this. Because I haven't really blended in much, it's not too important. But to add color to a grayscale image is a legitimate art style, is an art style that I like to do. Um, not so much an art style, more of an art technique. It's, it's, it's very common with comic book artists, for example, they will use grayscale first and then use color later. Um, many artists who work with markers will do colors first and grayscale later, or colors first and shadows later. You can do it this way just to save on your markers if you so choose. So we'll pick a skin tone for the character, which I think that should roughly be Rhino's flesh. And what I do here is I just add this over the grayscale area. So you add it over every single part of the grayscale. You want it to go over the, um, the shadows, the highlights, you want it everywhere. And those areas where I didn't add any of the gray will be 
the skin tone. You'll see it's pushing the skin tone to the surface, and now you see his flesh is there. So this is another way of adding your colors and your shadows, if you want to do that. Uh, do I think it's better or worse? I don't really think there's a difference. I think it might be easier for someone who has color blindness or someone who struggles to see certain colors like myself. It is a good way to do it if you work with your gradients or grayscales first and then apply your color later, as opposed to doing it the other way. Um, because when I work, and I know when I work with blues, for example, or reds and blues together, I really struggle to make them deep. I, I struggle to get those shadows perfect. I struggle to get the differences in those lights and darks. Um, it's very hard for me. I can't see them too well. So for me, if I was to work in those, I would prefer to do the grays first or the deep tones first, but preferably grays, and then layer a single red layer on top of it. Again, showing you an example of me doing that with the pencil, because um, it is the same principle uh, here, this one. Oh, let me zoom out a little bit, guys. Sorry about this. There you go. So as you can see here, this was working backwards. So this was pencils first. So grayscale first. Same rules apply. I could have done it with the markers, but grayscale first. And then one single marker across those gray areas. No, no variance of tone. No deep green and grass green and lemon green and all of this nonsense. It's just green. I used just a green and just a blue. And that was it. I put it over the top of it and it made a perfect shadow and it was easy for me to see um very very clear and i will be doing that as well with my buzz lightyear in this stream so i'll show you guys how it works with pencil um a little bit shortly um so just bear with me a moment um thank you boldron uh i do flat um ba -da 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 -da. oh god i was very itchy hello from montana usa hello bobs how are you I think that's what, wait, what? I'm trying to. I'm, I am trying to read some of these comments um, while I'm doing this. Just aware that this is a uh, a stream or a video tutorial as well. Um, there are buffering issues, I know, um, but I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. It is not my fault. I don't know why the system's doing that. It's not my fault. <laughs> like I'm getting no reports of anything as well. Um, there's no buffering on my side. There's no dropped frames on my side. Um, just clarifying this for those of you who are just joining us. Um, and also, if I look into YouTube right now, YouTube is saying that everything is excellent. So, whatever the uh, issues are that you guys are suffering, um, it's an internal issue, uh, probably with YouTube's playback right now. Uh, YouTube does have playback issues now and then, but hopefully you guys can uh, see. Hopefully. Uh, where do you buy these coloring books from? Uh, coloring books can be found anywhere. So I, I don't buy coloring books from any special retail or anything like that. I buy my coloring books from just standard retail stores or anywhere that I am. And don't worry too much about things like papers, by the way. This is a question that I get so often about what paper do you recommend for markers? I, I, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. Like you can use any, uh, the only thing I would say is don't use marker paper, but it doesn't matter. You can create artwork in any surface and any paper with markers just so long as you adapt and you respect the medium you're using, you respect the paper that you're using, you just change. You guys have seen it with my cheap versus expensives when I use kids' art supplies. You know, you can make compelling artwork as long as you respect the product you are using and you just adapt to those. Now, granted, if you're not an experienced artist and you haven't been doing it for a very long time, you may struggle with that because you don't know your style. You don't know how to adapt to that. But don't focus on those things about what paper. This is very, very cheap. This is actually recycled paper. So this is extremely cheap paper. This is um, what most people would say is very bad paper. I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So we're going to return to the um, tutorial of these gradients. And if you are wondering, what does this grayscale have to do with coloring? It has everything to do with coloring. Grayscale is the foundation of your shading. Grayscale is the foundation of your artwork. It's the foundation of your shadows. It's the foundation of everything you do. Learn grayscale and you'll be able to do anything with your artwork. So learn the grayscale. Is that Reagan in the chat? Hey Reagan, how's it going? How are you? So apologies, the music is very loud by the way. Um, let me just make sure it's not too loud for everyone. I hope the music is nice for everyone. I hope. Uh, Time, could you pin the throne link, please? It's, um, we started a new stream, so it's not there anymore. Uh, okay, so, moving back onto this grayscale. Where was we at last time? So I didn't actually blend that in. I've just noticed. I, I left that, not blended. Let me just push that color back into itself and uh, add a slight blend to it. There you go. 
Okay, that should work. Uh, unless, if you can't blend, uh, if you can't pin, sorry, I'll pin the comment. Um, if it helps. Actually, I can do that. Why am I being lazy? Why am I making my mods do all the work when I can just do it myself? Um... YouTube mod is not as powerful. I got you. Okay, that makes sense. My apologies for asking too much of my moderators. I love you guys. There you go. Um, and I'll just pin this comment to the... I won't pin it, apparently. It's not going to let me. There we go. All right, it should be pinned. There you go. Just wanted to make sure that was there. Oh, I don't want to do that. All right, cool. All right, so back to this. So again, back to the foundations here. You'll notice that I'm working on these areas that are sticking out first before I'm working on that base area. I'm doing that for the purpose of tutorials. When I work, it's all internal, it's all instinct. Um, but what I'm showing you here is the basis of the instinct. The basis of what I use subconsciously to get those shadows and to get those areas. So the next area I'm gonna work on will be this part. And you will have to know anatomy, by the way. Without knowing anatomy, you aren't really gonna fully be able to understand what it is I'm doing. A great example is this area here. If you're looking at this with zero knowledge of anatomy, you probably have no idea what this structure is supposed to look like. What is this area? So if we just draw this area in relation to the rest of these objects that we've got here, so we'll just move over to yeah, about here, and we'll draw something like that. So this is that area here. Now, you may not know that this part is on top, this part is on the bottom. So what's happening here is you have a muscle here that drops down here. In fact, there's like two muscles there. You have the muscle there and the muscle. It's a tricep. So there are three in total, but yeah, it's a tricep. So knowing that is extremely important for knowing how to add these shadows and add this sort of style and this effect to this image. So let me show you. I'm sorry? Oh gosh, no, no, no. You do not have to offer me financial support, guys. It is totally fine. Did the stream crash for anyone else? No. If it lagged, try to refresh. Yeah, there's some problems with YouTube right now. I apologize, guys. I apologize. So, um, here we go. Let's move on to the shadows. So, this area here, we're going to start shading it. The same thing that we would do in this area. So, doing it on this separate sheet of paper. We'll add the base layer. Think of where that light or that highlight is going to be. So, the highlight is going to be in that area again. So again, all we're doing is we're adding this, but we have this other object that is interacting. Again, it's another cylinder shape. So interacting objects also apply their own shading and shadow effects to the area. So I did this very loosely right now just to help you guys out. But this will be one object, this will be another object, but when they merge together, we have to link them and blend them with each other. And you can if you want to enhance, by the way, which I will be doing. The light effect on the top layer by just going underneath the entire thing like that. So I'll get my dark color. This will not go all the way across. This will go straight down now. This one here will go there. And I'm just going to blend that in. And there you go. So when I say cylinder, by the way, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the foundations of these shapes... And I'm breaking that down as a cylinder shape. It may not be a perfect cylinder, but it follows the structure of a cylinder. It follows the direction of a cylinder. And that's the easiest way that I find to create shadows. When every, Whenever I look at everything, this is probably the most... The, the, the most... This is the most... This is the, the most prevalent example on this entire page right here is this cone. A cone is a simplistic shape that I would use for identifying my shadows and where I'm going to put those um, those basic shapes. So with this cone, it is right there. So I don't need to actually think about this. The cone is doing it for me. I have it and I've even put some lines there which are going to teach me. So that's a really good thing. This area here, this would be a big cylinder that would come across this whole area. So because it's a cylinder, I can apply. If I actually draw it out, this might make it easier for everyone. So if I was to draw this large area here and have it coming down there, like that. So as it sits, it goes like this. But because it is a cylinder, it goes all the way like that. So there's the big cylinder that that object is. So because of that, I know where the light source is coming from. The light source is... Where did I have it? So the light source is there. So the light source is here. So all of this area will be shadowed like that. And even a little bit on the back towards the highlight. So I know that when I put my shadows on, I know... 
that's how it's all going to apply to that object. And that is all art is. Basic shapes and building on those basic shapes. It's so easy. The stream shouldn't have crashed. I'm so sorry, guys, that the stream is just being uh, very, very, very weird. I'm sorry that YouTube is just messing around at the moment. We are having some extreme issues with buffering. Uh, there should be no issues with playback, but buffering is just being very weird. Uh, I don't know why it's doing it. We have no reports of any issues. Um, YouTube is not telling me there's any issues. So I can only surmise that this is a... Um, yeah. This is an internal YouTube issue. So people are saying that they're lagging. So it's I'm so sorry. Because some people are saying that they're not lagging. Um, I think this is a... Um, an individual issue. I'm just going to wait for people to tell me if they are lagging. Because I, I think the moderators are going to tell me. Um, it's not buffering. Chill, bro. See, some people are saying they're not buffering. So, as I say, it's just having... I don't know what's going on. There's just like... Um, I think it's just wherever you are or whatever, there's just problems. But most people aren't having issues. So, I think that's okay. But it's very, very annoying that the one time I decide to stream on YouTube, YouTube's having problems. Um, the same thing happened actually when I was streaming on... Uh, when I posted my video. There was an issue yesterday with that. Which was super annoying. They're refreshing every 10 seconds. Yeah, that's super annoying. Why is it doing it? I'm trying to think of like what could possibly be causing it. And I have nothing. Um, because it's not on my end. So people are saying it's crashed as well. I'm so sorry for everyone who is watching this. You're watching it fall apart in real time. Because it's doing it on my device as well. Um, if I just load this. I'm just watching it for myself before I carry on. No, I would if it would load. I strongly believe that YouTube is just being weird today. Yeah, a lot of people are saying to me that it's looking good. I've actually just read the live chat there, guys. Um, a lot of people are saying it's looking good, so I, I, I just... Time, how is the stream looking for you? Are you experiencing any lag? I actually can't play it at all. I've got no playback at all on my end. It's just not doing it. It's not playing back at all. Like, that's so... Yeah, it's just not playing back for me at all. No idea what's going on, guys. Um, but YouTube needs to sort out their live streaming. Because it is an incredible issue. Hitomi said that they've not had any issues. Yeah, I it's gotta be it's gotta be YouTube. I'm so sorry, guys. It's perfect. I think that this is a um yeah, I think it's a YouTube issue. It's funny how the one time I decide to stream on YouTube, they decide to have problems. I don't, I don't know. YouTube is having an update. Dude, like, honestly, I uploaded a video yesterday and it was an issue with notifications. Uh, two days ago, sorry. And it was an issue with YouTube's notification system. And it was a problem. I live streamed, there's a problem. It's like, YouTube hates me. But anyway, back to the tutorial. I'm so sorry, guys. So, um, yeah, let's start working on some of these areas. I actually work on that big object because I think that's very important. So before I do the rest of the muscles, we'll work on the large object, applying the exact same logic as before. I'm a little bit upset because I've lowered my quality um, massively. Like I'm on 30 FPS right now, which is, I don't like 30 FPS, but it is what it is. So again, I've got all my markers upside down. I've got free notifications for the stream. It's so weird. <laughs> right, so the highlight is going to be in this area right there. So as I apply my highlight, I'm going to just use the same technique, pushing that marker away. And it is a little bit difficult when you are working with an object obstructing you, by the way. So as you can see here, I've got this cone that's in my way, which is just a massive headache to get around. But it's okay. So I'm pushing that marker up to where the highlight is going to be. And this is one of the issues I've just noticed um, with the recycled paper, which I'm sure you guys have already seen. If you're experienced with recycled paper, you know what the problem is. 
that line, there's a little line right here. Recycled paper is made from a mixture of random things, right? And uh, sometimes those things get pressed into the paper, as you can see right here, which don't allow you to color over them. It is very annoying, it's very frustrating, and that's one of the big problems I have with using coloring books, is recycled paper. But at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. I think that... I... I think that recycled paper, or just paper in general, is overhyped in terms of um, its, its effects on your overall work. I do not think that paper is the be-end-all of your results. By the way, if you are wondering why I'm pushing against myself after just saying to you, always press the markers away from you, that rule applies to an inexperienced artist. Now, I would always try to push the marker away from me to get those natural flicks, but as an experienced artist, I'm able to control my flick. So a normal artist or someone who is just starting out will always do things like this where they get very hard ends to pulling it back, but they'll always get softer ones as they push it away. As an experienced artist, I can control both sides. I can control going like that and I can control going inwards. You have to become experienced before you start doing stuff like that. So always, if you are inexperienced, push away from yourself. Once you get the experience, pull it into yourself. You can do that. I am reading some of the comments. Just bear with me a second. You can play back if you delay 20 seconds. Okay, so if you guys delay the stream, apparently it looks perfect. So yeah, there's a little tip for everyone. Delay your stream a little bit so you don't have to deal with the buffering. Whatever's causing it. Uh, YouTube is being awesome. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm sure once the video goes live onto the platform, um, the lag will be gone and everything will be cool. Um, so once it happens, um, I will keep the video live, by the way, uh, assuming that everything is running smooth because obviously there's been some donations, there's been some stuff happening, so I wouldn't want you guys to miss out on that. So I want to make sure that that stuff stays up. So yeah, we'll just hopefully that will work out. So back to this anyway. Now I'm doing the same thing. I'm just moving the gradual gradients in. Uh, you don't have to apply the flick if you don't want to when you're doing your second tones. I do. Because it makes it so much easier to push those colors in. So when I'm doing, as you can see here, I'm getting a natural soft transition of those markers. Which means I don't really need to use the base layer. But I'm going to use the base layer again. I will move into a colored piece, by the way. This isn't all the tutorial is. I'm only going to do a little bit more of this. And then I'll move into color. Because I know that many of you want to use color without using gray. Um, I just think that gray is... I missed it. I just think gray is very important for anyone who's learning color. It's an extremely important thing. So again, I'm going back down here. And you can do this if you want, by the way, what I'm doing here. So you can do a solid line like that. And then you can blend that in. It just requires a little bit of effort. And what I would do is this. Go on the side and then push it in like this. But doing it like this, you don't get the best blend. You don't get the smoothest blend. It's not ideal. I would always suggest just pushing those colors into them. So I'm going to stop on this one for now because I think that we've kind of covered the basics of that and all of that is something that you can take into your artwork. You don't need to see me do a complete piece of art. Um, it wouldn't be useful to show you that. I can show you how to apply some color to this if you'd like to know very quickly. Um, I know that Rhino is gray and I just saw someone say Juggernaut. I could do red on this just to show you what red would look like. Layering it just for the sake of it. Um, this isn't something I want to do. But I'll show you. So I'll get a red. Now, you're going to want... That's actually pink. That's actually prawn. This is light prawn, guys. If you watch my live streams regularly, you know how I feel about markers when they do stuff like that. They name their markers random colors, and I don't like it. Nobody knows what a prawn is, right? Well, we all know what a prawn is. But we don't care about the color of a prawn. Just say it's light pink or light red. That's all I need. But anyway, right, so, if I'm going to add color to this one, which I sh shouldn't, you want me to do purple? I can do purple. Let's let's do purple then, if that makes it easier. Um, we'll use a purple. So, if I just get ew, any kind of purple, this might work. If you get a purple like this, when you're layering over gray, and I said this in the intro, but just in case anyone missed it, or skipped ahead because of problems, um, always use a marker that is translucent. You want something that isn't solid, that isn't opaque. You don't want something like a ohuhu. If I layered ohuhu over this, I would just completely remove all of the grayscale and that would be pointless. Using a Copic or a Winsor & Newton Prime Brush Marker or a, um, a Graphic B Marker, I will get a 
I'll get a smooth layer across the image, but I'll also get a translucent layer that will allow the base to show through, which is exactly what I want when I'm working in grayscale. So using a Copic, I get this, and then I use it wherever you guys want me to use it. I don't know if it's probably too dark, but we'll see. But if I just scribble this over it, again, I don't have to worry about any blends or anything like that. You put it over it, and you get the natural shadows and the natural shades apply to that colored layer that you're using. And it is a very natural, organic approach to it. You don't have to worry about getting um, different tones of purple. As you can see here, I'm just blending it in. You don't have to worry about getting different blends of purple, deeper purples, or aubergines, or anything like that. You just use the grayscale as the base layer to push that in. But we're going to move on to the actual, well, an another way of viewing, uh, doing it. We'll put this to the side for now. Um, put that there. This is something that I did on one of my live streams on Twitch. And again, there is a link to my Twitch channel if you've uh, not seen it before. The Twitch is in the description of this video. This is my Twitch book. This is what I use um, for my uh, sketchbook sessions, things like that. Um, there's some very old artwork in here from a long time ago, which some of you are familiar with. And then there are some more, as we move forward, some more recent artworks, um, tutorials, or just, um, you know, artwork. So this is one of the artworks in question of an example that I'm going to be doing right now uh, of a lesson. Um, not the Iron Man. We'll use this one. I'm going to put these markers just over here for now. So, Buzz Lightyear. Okay. So this is a drawing, like I say, this is a drawing I did during my live streams. And it's a, a very crude drawing. There's not much refinement going on here. But I wanted to save this as an example as a tutorial for you guys on how you can save yourself money. Now, I wanted to make a video on this, but I think doing a live stream tutorial is a lot better. Again, finally, before I actually get into this, I do want to apologize for the buffering that you guys who are live watching this right now are suffering. Um, YouTube's having a problem, but if you are watching this on playback, hopefully there's no buffering. Hopefully. So, this is a way of saving money. Because I know many of you don't have a lot of money for markers. And rightfully so. Markers cost a lot of money. Um, depending on what type of brand you go for. If you go for Copics, don't. Don't, don't. don't buy Copics. You don't need to. Copics are extremely expensive markers. And don't offer you a value for money that other markers do not at a lower cost. So don't go for them. I would go for Winsor & Newton Brown Brush Markers. Or I'd go for Graphic B. Or I'd go for Ohuhu. Depending on what it is you're going for. But when you are layering, again, you want a translucent marker. Which... Copic R. So, what I'm going to do here is only use one tone, or one, we'll say color, but one tone of a color. So this is like a, a green or whatever that color is supposed to be. It's a green, horizon green. So we're going to use this one marker to color in all of the green areas. Actually, I don't think we should use this color. I'm just looking at the green right there. It's very, mm, that's not the accurate green. And that green's, too, okay, I don't have the correct green, but we'll use this one, it's fine. It's not the right green, but we'll use this one. So we're going to use this to color over our pencil. You don't need to remove the pencil. The pencil is fine to stay where it is. But if I look to some of these areas, by the way, start in the clean areas. Don't start on the pencil itself because you might move the pencil. You don't want to do that. Well, not just yet. So going into the clean areas, I'm just going to pull this towards the highlight. I'm just pushing it up. Trying to get a nice soft color up there. And when that dries, I'm really hoping that's going to dry a little bit lighter than that. Because that looks very dark. And over here, we're going to go over the pencil. Which, as you can see, is already making that green very, very dark. And I'm going to push it into the highlight. So just flicking it up. Being very delicate, because that's a delicate area. And there you go. With one marker, I'm able to create... Let me just make sure it looks good on the camera. Yeah. With one marker, I'm able to create a, a depth, a shadow, a tone, only using pencils and a marker. You can layer over this as well once it starts to dry. Because once it dries, the pencil will be safe. And when the pencil is safe, you can add the depth to it. So as you can see right there, that's one marker. One marker. I didn't have to pay a lot of money for an entire collection of markers. I'll probably be able to complete this entire piece with three colors. And that's it. So think of how much money I've saved by doing that. Rather than paying for an entire collection of, say, 
one green and let's just say at minimum you use three tones. So I would use at minimum three, maybe four. So instead of buying three or four tones, I'm able to do that with one. So I have saved a third, a fourth, uh, well, two thirds, two, uh, three fourths, uh, three quarters of the total amount of money that I would have been spending to get that same result. Think of how much that saves you in the long run. Where a piece of artwork that I'm going to complete here would take me, let's just say three, we use three as the lowest ballpark here. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. Generously, I'm going to say 18 markers. I only have to use five. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Because the pencil doesn't have to be good. The pencil can be a basic pencil, which is what I used here. A standard pencil, a number two or a HB. Standard pencil and five markers. Rather than... God, how many markers? 18 markers. Save yourself money, guys. Save your money. So... Let's get back on to adding some of this. Now, um, some of this is a little bit complicated because we do have an effect going here. I would recommend uh, doing this differently to the way that I'm doing it right now, um, but I'm not going to. But when I have an effect like glass or plastic, which he has here, a plastic helmet, the plastic helmet I would do after usually using a white pencil to go over the markers. Um, but for now, it's not that important, so it's fine. There you go we'll just put that there and we're starting to get some of those steps i've been making it so complicated this whole time it honestly it's it's very simple i think people overlook how simple it can be to create artwork and save money uh people see many creators like myself um other creators like jazza or other people using expensive products and huge collections of markers we are paid to do this we are paid to use the products that we use in our videos maybe not the products themselves i.e sponsorships or anything like that but our job, our income comes from creating artwork. So we're able to purchase these products at either a tax write-off or whatever. Sometimes we get them for free, depending on, obviously we always disclose that when we get them for free, but we get these products. We don't go and spend tens of thousands on markers. You know, I didn't buy 3,000 markers. I was sent most of those markers. I maybe bought a hundred of them. So. You can't look at what we're using and say, hey, that's what I need to use. No, no, no. We use them because we are privileged enough to receive those markers or to have received them or to write them off as our business. So we use those products and we can take liberties in those products that we use. But they aren't products that we recommend. We just use them because we have them. So I would recommend if you weren't in that position anyway, even if you are in a position, do not do it. When I create my artwork, I don't take liberties by using them. I know that I can probably replace these or get more sent to me. But that's just because I have that. I have that access to do that. So maybe I take liberty sometimes when I do use my markers because I'm not afraid to run out of them. But if I wasn't in that position, I would certainly want to save my money. And doing things like this, doing shortcuts like this is a great way of saving your money. So don't look at the creators and think that's what I need to use because you absolutely don't. We're just taking liberties of the products that we have access to. And there's a big difference there between what we have access to, the liberties we can take with them versus what we actually would recommend you use. So yeah, be careful when you are watching creators and seeing what we use and don't just use what we're using because it's it's not always what it seems. And I do my best to be as honest as I can when I make my videos. I do my best to be as honest as I can when I'm doing my live streams. And um, yeah, you know, ask questions. Uh, if you guys have questions on what, you, what I should be using or what you should be using, oh no, what I should be using. Yes, ask questions on what I should be using. <laughs> but as you can see here, I'm saving so much money here by using one single marker to just color in this area. Now, obviously, I've got to be careful not to layer too much. And it's not perfect because I'm not going to really be able to get a nice blend going there. But if I do find that I'm not getting a perfect um, blend, then I can use my blender. Now, a blender isn't too good on a product like this on a sketch paper. But with this blender, I can just naturally soften how those areas interact with each other and remove the streakiness, um, especially when you're going from like a color to a white area. So an, an area with no color whatsoever. 
anytime that I'm going into a color itself, I will always use that second color or the lower level color to push the top layer into it. So I'll never just use a blender ever on top of a second layer. That, that will never happen. In fact, I think this is probably good advice. Uh, man, I should probably take my time here to explain this. I would never use one of these on top of a color. I would always use this when going from a color to an area absent of color. Never on top of another color. I think that if you have a base layer, you're going to damage it by using one of these. Um, don't use a blender or a, a clear marker, as some brands call them, um, on, on another color. It will just damage the color. It's not worth it. Only use it on those clear areas. And yeah, you'll be good. Sub and like, thank you so much, Caesar. Appreciate you. You feel like you should use Slappy Duck more often? I should. I should use Slappy Duck. We should. This is Slappy Duck, by the way, guys. If you don't know who Slappy Duck is, Slappy Duck was gifted to me by Bjarken, a um, a follower, subscriber of mine, who is really awesome. And uh, there you go. Slappy Duck gets a little slap, and uh, Slappy Duck glows. I don't want to hit him too hard. Like, <laughs> I'm trying not to hit him too hard. But Slappy Duck, yeah, Slappy Duck. <laughs> we love Slappy Duck. <laughs> right. So, moving back onto this area, we're going to um, have a problem now, actually, because I didn't leave a white area. It's fine. Obviously, this area is a lot darker than it should be. Uh, that's my bad because I didn't actually plan originally on coloring this. So, I, it's not going to be perfect. But as you can see, I'm just blending that into that area and do the same thing over here. I'm going to leave a little clear area like that. And then just blend this in. This is going to definitely have a different look. It's going to be more realism, which is fine. It's not a problem. It's not what I was going for. <laughs> you know, he says after blending the entire thing, oh, that's not what I was going for. I wasn't going for realism. It's just, you know, just colors. So again, that blank area, I'm just going to put the blender in the blank area. That's going to add a nice natural... Obviously, I ideally, I would have removed the, um, the pencil, which I didn't do. I don't think I can actually remove it now. I wonder. Nah. Okay, you can't remove the pencil underneath the marker. You live and you learn. There you go, I learned something new. Hi, Slappy Duck. <laughs> My phone creators use DSLR. But as we can up, I think that um, we're in a position now, guys, if you are looking to record your own videos, uh, mobile phones are on par with DSLRs. So you don't need a DSLR to make videos. I use a DSLR to make my, uh, obviously, these shots. And this is a webcam, so that's why the quality isn't ideal. But you do not need a, a, a fancy camera to make videos. A fancy camera just comes with benefits to it and uh, makes my life a lot easier, which is why actually in my wish list, there is a camera, which if I can get that camera would be incredible because the more cameras you have as a creator, I mean, really, I would add like 500 of them. I've added one, but I'd add like 500 because the more cameras you have, the much easier as a creator life is. And the easier it is as a creator, the more content you can make, the faster content you can make, uh, the better content you can make. So having cameras, it, you can have unlimited cameras, and the more cameras you have, the better it is. Uh, I don't like boom arms. I'm not a fan of boom arms. I know Jazza is a fan. I'm not a fan of boom arms. They're not for me. Um, it's not my thing. That's Jazza's thing. Boom arms just yeah, don't do it for me. <laughs> I don't get my kicks from those. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna color this area in. I'm actually gonna color this area without using a blender as well, and I'm gonna go into the shadow area right there. Just to show you that without using the blender or without purposely trying to create gradients using the marker itself, just the clear difference it makes from the pencil alone. So this is only pencil. There is no, I'm not trying to, as you can see, I'm scribbling. I'm not actually using any flicks or anything like that. I'm literally just using the marker itself in its purest form to color in. And as you can see, we get differences in gradients and tones. Now, if I want to add a depth to it, I can second layer over this just to add a bit more depth to that. Go here, add a bit more to add some more depth and go here, add some more depth. So you can see the effects you get from just using a pencil. It is absolutely beautiful. An amazing way of saving money. I know it doesn't look at... The camera doesn't look as great on camera. It's much better in person. Interesting. The camera is trying to scam me here. I'm so sorry, June. Yes, uh, YouTube is having some issues. Um, the video will be up after this stream. I apologize. But um, 
yes, the video will be up shortly after. And you guys can enjoy the full tutorial um, on the channel itself. I apologize sincerely. This is um, this is not what I wanted for people when they are watching the live stream. Um, as I say, some people are saying just skip back 20 seconds. You'll be able to watch this without the buffering issues. Uh, or you can refresh. But it is YouTube that is having the issue right now. We did try some stuff. But yeah, it is a problem. I'm so sorry, guys. You think it's the amount of light in the room. The light in this room is actually fantastic. If you look right here, and if you are just joining us, this is a new studio. So I apologize for the framing right here. I'm streaming at 30 FPS. I thought that changing it would be good, um, but it hasn't made a difference. But yeah, this is a new studio setup, which is a work in progress. We've got a lovely live stream sign here from Time. And uh, we've got a lot of assets here. What can you hear to me? Uh, we've got this from Bjarkin, and I love it. And yeah, it's just a lovely studio. And this from Time as well, which is uh, an adorable little stitch, which we can... Um... Boom. We can go from Stitch, or we can be Angel. Boom. We love it. <laughs> oh, and we got a spinning Sonic as well. Stop that. You stop spinning. Right. What is... That's much better. Okay, so back to this. YouTube is certainly... Yeah, certainly having issues. Certainly is having issues. Don't worry, it won't be a much longer stream, because I think that we're getting... We're getting the tutorial out right now. I think that everyone is getting the um, the idea of what I'm doing. I hope, anyway, actually, you guys, while we are live, uh, I'm sure if you are watching this on playback, you'll let me know in the comment sections. But if you are live with us right now or in the comment sections, let me know, um, are you finding and have you found this to be an informative and instructional or helpful um, tutorial? Do you think that um, it, it will help you going forward in the future? I would say that, and without arrogance here, this is an amazing tutorial in terms of the foundations that I'm laying for you in this. Um, please do take note of them. Um, maybe not use them strictly to a T because it's going to be an individual thing. But I think take the little things that I've said. So just to summarize, flicking away from you. Make sure that you're always pushing away from you because the natural arch of your hand will move your pen into a smooth and faded gradient. So always flick away from yourself. And when you become skilled, you can bring the marker back into yourself. But primarily push away as, as much as you possibly can. Uh, the next point that we said was to break everything down to a simplistic form. Which, as we said with the muscle textures, uh, was like this. So we're looking at a bicep here. We're looking at a forearm muscle. We're looking at a tricep. Break all of these areas down. And then when you put something on top of something. So as an example, when you put the big object over an ob when you break a pencil it breaks <laughs> but yes so when you add an object over an object this one needs to impact the one below by going like this and increasing that shadow's depth by what i do by the way when i increase a shadow's depth over another object is i go plus one so uh, i think this is really important to show you so if I, I know I'm jumping around a lot here, but this is a very important point. So if I have a, um, how am I going to do this? If I do two objects, right? Now I'm going to remove one of them, uh, the, the full guide of it, just for the sake of it to uh, help you guys out. But if I was doing that same object, so let's just say I have a, um, how am I going to do this? Right, I'll just draw a rectangle. So if I have a rectangle on top of a ball, right? So, with the ball, imagining there's a highlight here. When I'm colouring in a ball, and we keep that highlight where it is, right? So, we're just going to colour this in real quick. And we give the ball its... Um, there's no way I left the one marker I needed over here. Uh-huh. Right. So, when I'm colouring in a ball, I'm going to colour this ball in without focusing on the top layer. Again, do not focus on the top layer. Ignore the one that's above we don't need to focus on it just yet so i'm going to color this in as if i'm just coloring in a ball i'll stop obviously when i get to that object because there's no reason for me to go over that object so there you go we're coloring the ball we're ignoring that plank that sat on top of it so we're going around this one we're coloring this in the paper's getting damaged for some reason don't know what's happened there but there you go so we've colored the ball we've ignored the top layer so now I need to apply the top layer shadow. Now I can't use the same layer that I use, the same color. If I use that, we will get a double gradient and you can do it if you really want to, but let's just pretend that we can't use it because we won't get a double layer. We'll just get the same solid color. So we go up plus one. 
So when I go up plus one, I go here and add that object over here, which will darken that area plus one as well. So where's my plus one? Plus one doesn't literally mean the marker, by the way. I just say plus one in terms of the gradients that I'm going up in. So this area here will be plus one because it's already a deep tone. So I have to go darker with that. And there you go, I've applied that. Now I can bleed that into itself. If you're bleeding, by the way, a shadow into another object shadow, that's an indication of how far away your light is. So if I do it like this, this is a very strong and hard light. So that means that the light source is probably closer or it's an extremely light bright source. Light bright source. A bright light source. <laughs> if you keep a hard shadow like that. If I soften that shadow, so if I just move in this and then bleed this in, it's an indication that the light is softer and perhaps further away. So you're doing that and you're now further, you're moving the light back or you're softening the light. That's all that means. Um, I would give you an example, but I have extremely soft lights here. So as you can see on the paper, this shadow is very, very soft. But the closer I get to this, the harder that light becomes because the object is closer and because the light may be harsher. But I don't have um, a hard light with me right now unless I use a torch. But yeah, that's how you do it. It should be very easy. It should be easy. And um, that's a key thing to take away from this is art shouldn't be complicated. It shouldn't be difficult. All of this stuff will come to you naturally as you become a more experienced artist. You'll start to do these things subconsciously. I do these things subconsciously. I actually, and I explained this in a previous live stream, I had to figure out the techniques that I use backwards because I had learned through copying. I had learned through... Uh, referencing all the time. I never learned in school. I never picked up a book and educated myself on how to create shadows, how to create lights and darks, how to blend markers. I learned it by doing it. And so that means that I skipped an entire process there. And when I came to grips with it and figured it out, I had to figure out to myself, well, how can I explain this to someone else? How can I say to them how I'm doing it? Because the question and the answer was always what I just did. I, you know, I just pick up the marker and I just do it. And that's not a good answer. People don't like that answer. People don't like to hear that because that doesn't give them any information, right? So I had to figure out how I did it. And it came to me in a live stream. The previous live stream that I had done showing everyone how to do this, uh, it's a very old live stream now. It's about three years old or four years old. But in that stream, I randomly came up with the idea of the basic shape structure, the way of stacking objects on top of each other. And this isn't um, a new idea. People have obviously shown people how to draw like this before, but I came up with a way of simplifying it. And it just, I had to figure it out for me to be able to explain it. Um, so yeah, don't feel worried, I guess is what I'm getting at here. Don't be saddened that you don't understand um, what it is we're doing or how you can do it too. Because nine times out of 10, most of us don't understand it ourselves. Uh, people like myself and Jazza as an example, we learned art and we learned all of our skills as artists by doing it. We learned by just picking up pens, picking up paper, trying these things. And that's how we learned. Um, so don't feel like you need to go to school or you need this. The information we give you is just a way of speeding up that process. Um, it's just a way of you being able to skip some of the steps that we've done and uh, be able to, well, not skip the steps. It's, it's you doing those steps that we skipped. And uh, we didn't skip them because we wanted to. We just skipped them because of maybe ignorance to them. We just thought that we knew it and we just wanted to try. So you'll have a bit of a benefit if you take this information I'm giving you, take it aside, understand it, practice it, and see what happens. Um, I don't do a lot of drawings, just coloring. So if you want to avoid too much feathering or bleeding, um, I could use pencil to shade first. I mean, yeah, um, using pencil first is, it's just another technique at the end of the day. And techniques are, are individual based. It's up to you if you want to use the techniques, if you want to um, adopt them and see if they work for you, then that's great. Give it a go, see how it works for you. See if you're comfortable. If you have color blindness and things like that, which I have, uh, I struggle with certain colors. So when I work with my colors, like red and blue, for example, I really struggle to identify the, the connection point between them or the, the blending of them. So I have to work on values and that's all I rely on. So when I work with those values, um, it's a great asset for me to know lights and darks, gradients, um, gray tones. Sorry guys, it's something in my eye. It's really starting to bug me out here. But yeah, so I, 
knowing those gradients, knowing lights and dark shadows or gray tones is a, is a fantastic way of um, improving your overall artwork, which uh, if you are a pencil artist, you've probably been doing this already. As a pencil artist, you have learned all of these techniques. Uh, you probably know all of these techniques and you just got to translate them to your work. And uh, if you feel like translating them can be as easy as doing what I'm doing here, just putting that color over it, go for it. You know, shortcuts are the best way of doing artwork. I love a good shortcut. I love when artwork is fun. I love when it doesn't involve thinking. I think that thinking in artwork is not being an artist. I think that if you're if you're so preoccupied in trying to figure out how to do things, you're not doing it. You're not doing art. You're, you're doing equations. You're doing maps. You're trying to jump through hoops to figure out what it is you've got to do. Why would you ever want to put yourself in that position? Why not just understand the stream hasn't crashed. Uh, we're just suffering some issues with stream right now. Um, YouTube is suffering with some buffering. I don't know what it is, but um, just refresh your stream or as, as they're letting you know right now in stream chat. Thank you so much, guys. Um, there are just some things you have to do. It's a little bit annoying, I know. YouTube is just... <laughs> doing its thing. But yeah, um, always look for shortcuts in art, guys. You want art to be fun. You want it to be free. You want it to be enjoyable. And the last thing you want to be doing is thinking. You don't want to think when you're doing artwork. When you read a book, you don't want to think. You want to get lost in that world. Same thing when you do artwork. You want to get lost in the artwork. You do not want your mind occupied with, hey, what should I do next? I know it sounds crazy from someone who's saying, you know, oh yeah, think of the objects. Think of how does this interact with this object? Blah, blah. No, 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 no. That's your learning phase. I don't think of that when I'm working. When I'm working, this is subconscious. When I'm working, I'm not thinking about, oh, is that a triangle? Is that a cylinder? Is that a ball? I'm not thinking about that at all. That never crosses my mind because instinctually, I know how to do that now. And you should too. And you should get yourself to that point. So sit down for an hour, sit down for two hours, do what I did here, get a couple of random objects, put them together on a paper, just stack them and then start working on those shadows and those lights. Do them individually first. So do your do your rectangle on one side. Do your ball on one side. Do a triangle on another side. Do their shadows. Do their stuff first. Do them equally. Apply the shadows and the lights to them equally. Then put them on top of each other. And then do their equal shadows and their interactive shadows. So here's an interactive shadow. Here's an equal shadow. So an equal shadow would be a shadow here, a shadow here. A flat surface like a, pla a plank is a very difficult... Uh, that's a hard one to figure out. So... Um, yeah, good luck with that. Um, the problem with a plank, if you just, just because I can't really say that and then not show you. The problem with a plank, if you're using it, so I'll just use this as an example. Um, if you, with one, so you have a hard shadow here and a hard shadow here because of where the light source is coming from. But now you need to create a, a difference. How are we going to showcase the light, right? Now, if you do this... Right, so you're creating a light tone over here. Well, then you have to do it over here like this. And it sort of, it shows that there is a, a torch or something. There is like something here, there's a direct, the line of light is in the direction of the plank. So you have to think about where your light source is if you're gonna do something like this. Or you have to do a completely smooth shadow across the entire thing or color across the entire thing. Think of like a wood or whatever an even one across the entire thing, and then darken this area here. So make this one, I don't really have a darker tone, but I'll just use something like this. Create a darker tone along this side, and maybe just add a little bit of a highlight on the end there. And that will be a way of just saying, hey, the light source is here, but it's not in a direct line of the camera or my eye line. Because if it is in that direction, then you're gonna see the light bounce off the object. So keep that in mind. And that is also, by the way, how you create surfaces. So if you're trying to create lights, dark surfaces, uh, I was in the lab a little bit ago and it kept buffering. YouTube is being funny. Thank you so much, Prepping Artists, for letting me know that. Yeah, there's been a um, there's been an issue with YouTube. Lo and behold, my first live stream of a very long time and uh, YouTube is having buffering issues. So I have lowered the quality of the stream, which is a little bit sad because I didn't want to lower the quality, but we've lowered the quality anyway. And next stream, I will be doing it in 60 FPS and making sure that it is smooth, um, assuming that YouTube is running well. Um, it is a shame that we lost the first stream though, because that was pretty cool. But we did talk a lot during the first stream. So I'm going to continue uh, doing a little bit more of this. I like this shadow color, by the way. It's really nice. It works really well. I might use that later to add some more shadow, but 
I want to show you guys one marker approaches because I think that one marker approaches are the point here on how you can save money. So we're going to go to the purple area, which again is basically almost all done here. Excuse me, I just had a little burp there. <laughs> so we're just going to color this area in. This is a very delicate area because it's quite dark. So I'm just going to do that. And a lot of these details are going to get lost, so I might need to use uh, something to just highlight some of those areas. But up here, we can just layer over that and then create a nice purple around here. And now, as you can see, they're very, very dark areas because I layered pencil quite heavily. So that's just going to give me a nice shadow effect to it. Any more purple areas I could do? Yeah, so this will be almost black, which is exactly what we want underneath that chin because I've created such a dark pencil layer. So again, just putting that under there. No need to use another tone. No need to pick up a an aubergine or a plum or any of these dark purples. I could just use the one purple across the entire area. Being careful of my strokes, obviously. Try not to go crazy with the layering effects that I'm doing there. Sometimes you want to clean off your pen. That's actually very clean, so that's fine. Clean off your pen every now and then to make sure that you aren't you don't have any residue of pencil around because you don't want that. It will just darken everything otherwise. But as you can see here, just bleeding that through. And we'll do it over here as well. We're getting a nice dark color here. Obviously, this whole area is very dark, so it's not going to show too much of a difference. Um, and here, we got a highlight. So that's fine. We could just do that. And it's looking good. Again, just saving money, guys. Saving all the money in the world here. I do not have to spend a lot of money. One cheap pencil and a marker. And I get to create effects. And it is awesome. Why would you want to spend $500, $200, $100 on so many markers when you can just have one marker do the entire job for you um yes i think what i'll do guys um i think we will end the stream here because i think we've covered quite a lot of stuff this is an hour and a half long and um the tutorial has been here a lot of buffering is happening so anyone who's new joining us they probably don't know that the buffering is an issue i apologize for that future streams will hopefully not have that issue this is a technical issue of youtube many people who do stream have said the same thing that's been happening to them so i apologize for that so much but i hope that everyone has found the tutorials useful uh, again this was a very basic one just to showcase different techniques on how to blend, how to use markers in the most effective way. Again, using markers with each other, you just apply the exact same bases and knowledge that I used using the gray markers. The gray markers is the foundation to using every marker. So whether you use colored various tones of markers, it doesn't matter. The gray marker will give you the knowledge on using every marker. So practice with grays, make sure you get those down to a T. And I apologize so much for this, but future streams will be happening once every couple of weeks, once every three weeks. Um, there will be a stream over here on YouTube. If you do want to see more regular streams, then please do follow me on my Twitch channel, which is down below in the description. If you would like to support me further for the Studio 2.0, which is the new room we're in right now, uh, with equipment and stuff like that, there is a wish list, which can be found again down below in the description. But guys, thank you all so much. I do hope you enjoyed today's live stream or video if you are watching this on playback, if the playback goes live. And uh, yes, I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video, which will be coming this week. So stick around for that. And yes, guys, I will catch you all later. Have yourself a wonderful day, night, morning, whatever it is for you. And I will catch you.